cricketing legend of Pakistan, Sana Mir, was the former captain of the Pakistan's national women's cricket team. She has represented Pakistan in 226 international matches and was a captain of 137 of them. She became first Pakistani woman cricketer in 2018 to rank number one in International Cricket Council One Day International Bowler Ranking. Under her captaincy, she led Pakistan to gold medal in Asian Games. For her outstanding achievements, she has been awarded Medal of Excellence Tamghai Imtiaz by the Government of Pakistan. Let's hear from her about her early life. So I was born in Apatab um, in 1986 and uh, we lived in Apatab for a couple of years. My father was in the army, he was posted in Apatab. It was also our home uh, city. Um, and then we moved to Gilgit where uh, I just went to school for a few uh, months. But then after my education started in Rajalpindi. Um, and I, did, I studied there till grade 4 and then shifted to Gujranwala and Texila. But most of my school education was done in Texila and HIT. And then we went to uh, Karachi. Uh, so with the whole army back, we kept moving. So I did my college from there. And then um, I did my pre-engineering from Karachi DHA College. And uh, then I went into NAST, but um, I couldn't take enough holidays from NAST because it was a semester system to be in camps or practice my cricket. So even before um, uh, getting selected for any team, I quit NAST to pursue cricket. And uh, so that's my whole education. And then I went back to my own college, DHA college, to do my bachelor's in math, stats and economics along with playing cricket. Cricket is considered the most popular sport in Pakistan and we'd we'll love to know how did you develop interest in cricket? So the interest in cricket was de developed because uh, as you know, you can see uh, children playing cricket on the streets all over Pakistan. So we used to live in different cantonments and saw a lot of cricket being played. Uh, and I just fell in love with the game. My elder brother, Humayun, uh, was uh, always playing and I would join him and he would take me along. So that's how I started uh, playing on the streets. Um, and whenever, uh, even with cousins, we used to get together. I was always with the boys playing cricket rather than with the girls uh, watching movies or whatever they, they used to do when they got together. So uh, that was my childhood. I was always a very outdoor person. I loved uh, cycling. I loved swimming, tennis, all kinds of sports. I did karate when I was young. I did some gymnastics. So I was very, very much an outdoor person and loved being outdoor, loved challenging myself physically and mentally. So I think that's how I I got into sports. Can you share your journey from playing cricket in the streets to becoming captain of Pakistan's national women cricket team and becoming most successful spinner in women's cricket? I was always like watching my father leave the home wearing that army uniform and representing the country. So the patriotism was really deep rooted and um, watching the men's team wearing a, a green jersey representing the country would always make a desire in my heart that I want to do that also. So um, I also wanted to be a fighter pilot at one point but when I gave my pre-engineering for, the, for those two years, um, they had stopped cooking girls. Initially, they started when I was in metric. For two years, they started uh, taking uh, girls into as GDP pilots. But for after two years, they said that we are going to do a trial and they stopped taking them. So I always wanted to wear a uniform that represented the country. And um, I loved outdoor sports. So the moment I got, you know, I saw an opportunity that there's a women's team I got to know about the women's team um, through a couple of articles and the moment I saw that there's an opportunity 
So I backed all the practice that I did as a child uh, playing cricket on the streets. I backed it and just tried my luck that if I can uh, represent my country through cricket. So there was a, a trial uh, being held by PWCCA. At that point, uh, uh, two sisters, the Khan sisters and Kiran Baloch, along with them, they were holding trials. Uh, so I, I uh, saw that in the newspaper. I went for the trials that were in the newspaper and I went for the trials, got selected uh, and then I did a camp with them for three um, weeks and then there was an Indian team coming, the under-21 Indian team coming to Pakistan under PCP. So and then I got a call from there and I went and gave trials there and I got selected there as well. So that's how I got into the mainstream. Uh, at that point, there was no under-19 or Pakistan A or any other structure functional. So, the girls used to come through open trials. So, they would come and there would be selectors, three or four selectors who would see uh, how the girls can play and then they would select out of there. So, that's how I got selected. So, I think I, uh, I, I initially I just um, learned a lot of stuff on the way. Um, I was, I think, 18 years old when I first played proper matches with with hardball cricket. So, I was pretty late to start that. They used to play with tape ball, tennis ball before that on the streets. There were no academies there. And then by the age of 19, I had already made my debut for Pakistan. So there was a very small um, time uh, which I played hardball cricket uh, before I went on to play for Pakistan. So in a way, it was easy to get in, but it was very, very difficult to keep pace at the international level because uh, other players were quite scared. They, they came from better structures. So we, all of us, most of the cricketers of those times, around 2005, we learned along the way. So the initial progress was a bit slow. Uh, as we lost a lot of senior players uh, when the merger was happening between IWCC and ICC. So, as a cricketer, I would I started off as a fast bowler. Uh, Imran Khan used to be my ideal. Uh, but due to lack of physical fitness and awareness and all all that stuff, um, I injured my back by over o- over exerting. So I had a st- I developed a stress fracture in my back when I was when I was uh, 20 years old, and then um, I tried remodeling my action, but it was quite difficult. And we had a series coming, uh, and there were not many girls who could. The play so I had to play that series as a batter and then had to really quickly get back into bowling because uh, we lacked more players so I started I tried out spin bowling because I used to do that as a child also uh, I used to bowl both so that uh, proved quite effective for the team so that's how I became a spinner and from there then I started watching Siklan Mushtaq Murli Dharan all those players then I, once I started going to the World Cups we, the team started going to the World Cups I got to know about Lisa Stelaker because at that point women's cricket was not on TV too much so we would only meet international cricketers or, or watch them female cricketers when we actually play with them so she was an ex- quite an extraordinary off-spin all-rounder from Australia. Then there was another really good all-rounder from Sri Lanka, Shashikala Saravardhane. So, of course, watching all these people around me uh, gave me more motivation to improve, keep improving my game. And um, and then I got also captaincy for Karachi for two years. We won both national championships. I was performing well for, for the team. So, after both the, the wins in the national championship and my performance, I was uh, given captaincy for Pakistan in 2009. And that's how I became the captain. Then we won some gold medals, uh, 2010, 2014. And we beat India in World Cups. So all that happened. And by the end, um, 2018, uh, which personally, I mean, as a team, we, we had all these big moments of beating India in World Cups, beating England, West Indies, having eight players in the ICC Top 20 ranking. All those things were really important for us as a team. 
and as an individual uh, reaching number one in the world uh, by the end of 2018 as a bowler was something that I really am a big part of. How has the support from your family and friends been towards your career? It has been exceptional. Uh, uh, my parents have been extraordinary in supporting me uh, follow my dreams. And my brother and my sister both have been very actively supporting. My brother was my first coach. He still manages me along with Amin. And uh, my parents have been have always put my uh, dream ahead of whatever they, they think. So I've been extremely lucky in that sense. And um, apart from that, my friends have got a great support structure for, for my friends also. So um, I've been very, very lucky uh, in that sense. It's a male-dominant world of sports. And there are still many barriers in sports that women and girls have to face. What challenges did you face personally and professionally? The struggles, I would say, have been, we have had all kinds of struggles. Of course, from uh, sponsorships, because women, cricket was not on television, so of course it was treated differently. From there till, uh, um, uh, like you said, that online people have a lot of expectations and then they do not uh, know how to express themselves. So sometimes they do uh, come as rude, they do write rude comments and inappropriate, inappropriate comments. Of course, you have to deal with it. Some people uh, block them, some people uh, give answers to them. So everyone's deal with it quite differently. And uh, the biggest struggle, of course, depression is very much a part of a player's life. Some people talk about it, some people don't talk about it. But of course, I have all I have also gone through a lot of phases where I felt depressed. Um, but I was very, very lucky that I had really good mentors around me. And my family support and my friends who have been my anchor. So I've... Um, I do a lot of research uh, uh, upon how to deal with with phases in life when you are not feeling uh, very confident and uh, depressed. So I've worked very hard on that also. And there were a lot of phases because the thing is, Pakistan, the cricket loves crazy nation and they want uh, results. But they do not, uh, they might not have understood the whole journey of women's cricket because it was not in public service. So the pressure of expectation and then the actual result, there was so much contrast that it puts a lot of pressure on play. So of course, uh, it was pretty much there and I was extremely lucky to have mentors like uh, the late Shabano Arjani that I've mentioned a lot on social media, my family, my friends and um, other people who have been my mentors along the way. I mean, uh, I don't uh, like to be compared with men um, in the sense I, I don't feel that that's the right approach. Women, women have, have their own standing. What I would really like to compare it would be with athletes, women athletes, women cricketers around the globe. That's, that's what our perspective should be. What men are doing, what they are getting, it's for them. For us, um, our, our initial comparison can be with other teams who are performing similar like us, who are in the same structure. So of course, uh, there's a huge now pay gap between Australia, England and, and the rest of the world. So unless we are going to uh, understand that and try to work over that, then the, the bottom team, the bottom four, four to six teams uh, are going to struggle a lot. So my take is a bit different. I feel women are extraordinary and they should have their own space. Um, and I think the, the way forward has to be uh, having benchmarks that the best teams in the world have at the moment right now. You announced retirement last year, 2020, but you kept honoring your country for the past 15 years with your brilliant performance, enthusiasm and zeal. How did you prepare yourself in terms of training routine? So of course, at the moment, I'm taking it quite easy. Uh, but generally, when you are an active cricketer, it has to be three to five hours of training every day uh, when it's off-season. Right. And when you're in season, it, it, uh, it can go up to six to seven hours a day when you're playing one-day cricket. 
So it, it stuck to it, uh, and then uh, um, with the kind of uh, calendar you have, it also fluctuates between how much physical training you are going to do and how many matches or skill work you are going to do. So skill work involves cricket, batting, bowling, and fielding. And physical fitness involves everything that you do in the gym, and then there's match practice when you actually play the game. So uh, the training is generally divided into these three phases: skill work, fitness, and um, actual playing. Right. So that's how we uh, plan for the year. The participation rate of women and girls in sports is quite low compared to men in Pakistan, because of many personal, social, or cultural barriers. What is your message for women and girls to encourage them to participate? Okay, so for Pakistan, um, I would just say that uh, if you are really passionate about the sport, it's very important for you to understand that you have to work harder than anyone else to actually make a difference at top level. Because um, for us, uh, still, even though we. more money and even though icc is pushing women's cricket still uh, we do not have a culture of sports in pakistan so individuals have to work harder in our part of the world um, than other players that's one thing that they have to understand we will have to work hard um, and the other thing is we have to be patient we have to be a good team player uh, to actually play this sport and there is a lot you can do with your own focus sometimes we make resources a very big issue but um, whatever resources that you have got uh, if you are going to utilize them best um, there is a better chance for you so uh, for for that there is so much material on youtube there is so much material on facebook now because of technology a lot of us can get access to to that so if even if you can't come to big cities which most of the girls do uh, even if you live in a small city and you have dreams until cricket becomes big and spreads all over pakistan which will be a dream for all of us uh, until that this a lot you can still do it at home if you are really passionate so just just find ways to fulfill your dreams and work really hard thank you sana meer the most successful spinner in women's cricket and a powerhouse for pakistan <laughs>